Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for my end of summer garden tour. As usual, I'll go in the same order and I think I start over here normally. This bed, as you can see, has been cleared out. I had a huge big hollyhocks there that just got way too big for its boots. There's some rocks I need to clear. There's some odds and ends. I really need to think about this and redo it properly from scratch. I have some purple passion hanging in there that's looking a bit straggly and a few dahlias that come up but they are yellow which is not my favorite color and as you can see they look a bit bedraggled so I don't know I'm gonna have to rethink this whole bed probably in the spring or in the winter I'll put in something evergreen this is my dwarf hydrangea it's probably the last time it's gonna bloom pink because we have acid soil so all of our hydrangeas go blue but I was really pleased with how it did I should probably dead hit it here is the little side garden I'll go up this way some foxgloves which hopefully will bloom next year Daphne they have Tennesseetum Robinson's giant mix they obviously new so they won't have bloomed this year either more foxgloves very tired looking rose Escalonia some alyssum in the front and a few tired rose bushes. I'm not great with roses. This is Oregonum Kent Beauty. I'm hoping that will look really good next year. Foxgloves. Another Daphne. And more foxgloves. And then that is our <laughs> poor excuse for an Acer. It's just wind burned and that's the stump that the Acer broke off of. There's actually no weeds behind there for once. We had a big clear out. Also cleared out the petunias which were bedraggled and looking spent. I think I'm going to put some succulents into there. I think these are the only hollyhocks that are still standing and as you can see they're spent. Look how well our core fire is doing. That's our citizenship tree and it's kind of chest high to me now so I'm really pleased that it's doing so well. Hydrangeas are all finished and I've deadheaded them. Cosmos self-seeded from last year and I have some perennials in there some delphiniums look how beautiful this is I'm really into blue like true blue flowers I just think they're so pretty I've got some lupins that bloomed I need to kind of dead hit them cut off the seed pods and that is how that bed is looking the driveway bed is not looking great. Those weird lily things have all died. I've got some violets spreading here. They're wanting to come over the edge instead of spreading that way. That's the self-seeded hollyhocks and so is that. They're gonna have to come out. I need to probably pull out this old dwarf stock or at very least deadheaded and see if it'll bloom again. end of summer everything's looking kind of spent and bedraggled and not great I may actually take to filming these garden tours kind of mid-season instead of end of season so you can see everything looking good this is my little dahlia and then this garden that's all oregano I need to cut all that back look at my echinacea it's so beautiful this is all spreading Lots of self-seeded Cosmos. This is an Aster king size apricot. There's not much still going. Marigold, more Asters coming up. In here I had poppies, there's another dwarf hydrangea, pansies, more self-seeded Oregonum, calendula, lavender's finished. So that is how the section's looking. We've moved the table and chairs onto the deck for guests to enjoy because we weren't actually using it. Some weeds in here. Look at my Nandina. They're all red. Gorgeous. I still can't believe that these were two tiny little sticks of Virginia creeper that looked half dead and now they've just taken over both of those poles 
as you can see I was cutting out the hollyhocks but our green waste bins are full so I just threw them on the lawn until later odds and ends these zinnias were self-seeded from last year more hollyhocks on the ground this bed needs sorting out the osteospermum has died we'll get to that in a minute it's my greenhouse here I've got lupins foxglove and iris there were poppies in here pansies and a little bit of nepeta at the end here but that needs a bit of attention everything needs a bit of attention right now Here's my veggie garden. Now these beds have been there for two years, I think, and I didn't use treated wood on the rails and I didn't line them with plastic. So while most of them still look great, there are some that are falling apart. So we have a whole new plan for this whole area, but it's kind of a long-term plan. It's gonna look completely different and yeah, it's gonna take a lot of work. But for now, this is how my veggie garden looks. Here I have seedlings that made it out of the greenhouse and never actually made it into the ground. I just haven't had time to cut the beds I wanted to. We have tomatoes growing everywhere. Lots of weeds. Here is the courtyard garden. A wild, wild mess. We have self-seeded cosmos. This is all yarrow or Achillea double pearl this is all going to come out because it just spreads like grass it's not great got some dahlias in the middle there penstemon another nandina that is a hebe lavender lace same as that one there's a bee floating around there the bees are loving the flowers yeah this is all a bit wild more tomatoes tomatoes corn that is finished I need to pull these corn stalks out these are tomatoes I did not stake and this is what happens they become wild jungly messes and you have to go searching for tomatoes not a great idea next year I'm going to make a video showing do's and don'ts with growing tomatoes and how to grow tomatoes from seed to fruit and to do it properly so that you don't end up with this I'm going to do some the right way and some the wrong way but rather you end up with that which is so much easier <laughs> I have some peppers growing here. Some more. This one fell over. That bed's empty. That bed's empty. There's one purple cabbage I never quite got to. That is our pumpkin patch. I've got pumpkin, two different types of little orange ones, and I'm also growing African gem squash. But I don't think it's the gem squash that I was thinking of that I'm used to from when I grew up in South Africa because. These never stayed small and got hard skins. They just kept growing massive. So I don't actually know what to do with them. Anyway, zucchini, zucchini. A few miserable little cucumber plants. My own fault because I haven't been watering them. And this is the worst of the bed. You can see the rail completely rotted out and it's actually falling to pieces, like literally. More tomatoes that I didn't stake. Look at the ones that I did stake are looking. How much easier is that to harvest and for them to ripen? Anyway, uh, this bed, not looking great. It was so much prettier earlier in the season. So I'll just take you in a circle around this bed and show you what's in it. This is Campanula, um, this is Scabiosa, but that plant's Campanula, Centauria, um, that's empty weeds <laughs> got some Achillea in the middle that probably needs to come out uh, more scabiosa self-seeded calendula self-seeded aquilegia or columbine or granny's bonnets lupins in the middle delphinium more lupins this is my blackjack pansy I just think it's so striking it looks quite purple today but quite often it blooms like completely black Maybe it's like cross-pollinating because it used to be totally black. More lupins. I've got a pelagonium in there that's not blooming right now. Some napita. Napita. 
foxgloves. This was my osteospermum. It was doing so well until it wasn't. <laughs> More aquilegia and they look like they have powdery mildew. But I left them to scatter their seeds everywhere. So hopefully I'll get a lot more of that. We've got a hellebore back there. And some cyclamen tucked away underneath that are not doing great. Okay, this garden is mostly full of weeds. Dead sweet peas. Do you like how I just completely missed over the weed filled berry cage? Some dahlias, pelagonium, there's a hydrangea back there, hollyhocks back there that's kind of spent. I've got lamium. I have my tiny, tiny little fuchsia plant. It's actually one plant in like two pieces. So, so pretty. Another hydrangea. Some ferns in there. Hebe lavender lace, Escalonia. I need to actually prune that to make it bush more. And another hydrangea. The junk pile. I promise we do come and like take trash from here to use for things. Still haven't made my shade bed around the hazelnuts or the hazel trees. I wonder if we're going to get nuts this year. I should probably prune this apple tree with this apple stump that sprouted back. Okay, this is different. All of these olives have gone. These used to be really tall, messy trees when we moved in. They weren't giving shade, they weren't producing fruit, and they were just dropping leaves all over the neighbor's drive. So Grant cut them down and then they kept like coming back because you can't actually kill an olive tree. And so we decided we, we don't actually want to keep having to prune them down to try and keep them short. So we just took them all out. We'd rather take them out and make room for trees that we actually want, like avocado trees or something. So he's killed them all, like with Roundup. And this is the vigorous grapevine on which there are actually plenty of grapes. So we'll see how they do. We haven't had a great summer, it hasn't been very warm, so I don't know. Okay, this bed, which kind of goes around and then peters out, this, the plan was to continue it, but just ignore that bit. We have Achelia double pearl, a half dead peach tree. Uh, this is Campanula. This actually looked really good in the spring, but that's all been cut back. Octotus, I love the colour of that. Nepita, some self seeded zinnias, a very sad looking hydrangea that I should water. Delphiniums grown from seed. This was all Comelina Sleeping Beauty, I've cut that all back. And then this is the tangled mess. We had hollyhocks all along the back, but I don't think I'm going to grow them there again because. Grant says he's noticed that they wave around and they set off the neighbor's security light. And we had one there which was doing the same for us. So I probably won't grow them again, especially because all of the self-seeded cosmos is kind of tall enough to add some interest in front of the fence. I've got all kinds jammed into this garden while my bushes and shrubs grow because they're kind of small. So in the meantime, I have, like I said, the self-seeded cosmos. I've got pelagonium in there I've got lupins delphiniums this is uh, the Achillea double pearl I've got Napita this is a milkweed have you ever seen milkweed this color this is my only surviving milkweed because the butterflies didn't find it they killed all the others I've got a westringer in there this is bergamot all came back from last year but I've I've cut most of it back we have camellias in there. We have strawberries, which don't actually produce fruit, acting as ground cover at the back. Can't even see the delphiniums hiding in this cosmos. Beautiful, beautiful. Self-seeded zinnias from last year. There's some choisiers, there's all kinds. So um, hopefully next year they'll start to grow a bit bigger and I can start removing some of this. This is a self-seeded zinnia. This is, uh, I think, giant double wine or something, something like that. I love these marigolds. I just think they're such pretty colors and tones and just adore them. 
and marigolds are annuals but this is kind of bloomed year after year look at all the bindweed in it this morning glory weed i know there's different kinds of morning glory this one is a weed and it just takes over everything anyway this is our mandarin that dies and comes back and dies and comes back it looks like it's doing pretty well i should probably put up a little windbreak around it but i don't know i don't tend to baby anything in my garden bergamot so this is the back border from this angle daniel trimmed it for me and he kind of went a bit wonky i think he just followed where the grass was going instead of like making a plan and cutting it straight but at least i didn't have to do it so this end is a bit of a mess all of this needs to be put through the wood chipper and the bed needs to be continued around to join up with that path over there which i'll show you in a minute and then all of that corner needs to be dealt with but not this year our apple trees have done well look at all that fruit however i didn't net them because i just think that's going to look really ugly to have trees sitting here with great big nets draped over them plus i don't actually have the nets and that's another expense that was not a priority so all of these apples will have codling moth i mean you can see there the the grub or worm or whatever gets in the bottom and they just end up riddled with worms and holes but i'll use what i can of the apples because these are actually really tasty apples and those are like really big apples so i'll come around this way this is going to become a bed this is the pear tree and then the two apple trees i'm going to put a bed around it and plant our lemon tree out as well which it's come back from the dead i thought it was dead but it's not so between the oak and the cork oak this is obviously new this is our office slash shop this is rebalance and for those of you who don't know i have an online shop now and this is where i run the shop from so like i said this you can see i've laid out i've started planning out the curve of the bed um there's going to be a bed going around so today i'm actually going to get grasses to go there and there kind of fancy some really feathery grasses we'll see what i find and i'm going to do two big pots one on either side of the door but that is the cabin and the new concrete path and then alongside the path like i said i'm going to move that pelagonium put a pot there has some grasses i've got some odds and ends here some nepeta or nepeta i'm going to take that out um i've got some aquilegia there and a violet and in this area i've got some penstemon that's a penstemon so is that i'm going to move that together and then back here we have a pear tree that's actually got loads of pears on it i'm gonna to have to prune that right down in the winter but back here we have a wood pile a trash pile just ignore all of that i'm going to put a huge hydrangea well it eventually it'll become a huge hydrangea so that as you're kind of walking along here it'll kind of peek out and fill that space so i need to get a hydrangea today um, coming around this way this was on the deck over there you, it's got wheels so you could move it up to one of the benches and eat there but we found people never did and i think the table and chairs will be used a lot more frequently this bed I put a pelagonium in the end or geranium whatever you want to call it Kent Oregon and Beauty to hopefully fill in around it I moved some rocks there because this is where the water kind of drains out for now anyway um, so nothing would grow there so I've got rocks there sorry about the wind I wanted to film this on an overcast day so there aren't like harsh shadows and you can see everything I've got self-seeded cosmos got some pansies going this is the last of the candy tuft, but this will self-seed as well. Some sweet william down there. Aquilegia, osteospermum, aquilegia in there, in the middle of the osteospermum. And a west stranger. This, you can see I was doing a bit of tidying up yesterday, and like I said, our green bins are full, so there's just junk everywhere. Stock, cut back the Achelia double pearl. We have a lauripetalum some stakies or lamb's ear pillia uh, what is that that is grass interspersed with achelia nandina uh, more achelia and this hydrangea brought me so much joy it was the most beautiful perfect sky blue but obviously they're all dead and faded now achelia and pelagoniums 
and then the pool area so the controversial pool area we don't normally leave the ladder up we normally have it as you can see there's a bicycle lock we lock it to this for safety sake we have no guests at the moment and there's nobody just randomly wandering onto the back of our property so the ladder's there because the boys were kind of coming and going so anyway going through there this is all going to change next year by the way we are still going to fence it and we are going to concrete the ground hopefully and paint this but that takes us right back to the side garden again so i hope you enjoyed my end of summer garden tour everything's looking really tired and washed out and bloomed out i think like i said i'm going to start filming these earlier in the season so you can see things kind of at their peak or rather than when they're all dying that bumblebee joining that dolphin here thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next one